This tutorial should help you to understand how to solve a problem that is planetary in scope and uses the law of conservation of energy. So we have a railgun being used to shoot a 500 kilogram projectile at a speed of 9,500 meters per second from the surface of the Earth. We're going to ignore the effects of drag force from the atmosphere and we're going to determine the speed of the projectile when it's at a height of 1.65 times 10 to the 7th meters above the surface of the Earth. Always a good idea to draw a picture of a problem like this before we get started. So here we go. Here's my Earth. Here's my projectile that is being launched at 9,500 meters per second from the surface of the Earth. And then we have this height. And note that it is a height. Be careful about that. Height means distance above the surface of the Earth, not distance from the center of the Earth. And that's a, that's a significant thing in this problem. So the height, 1.65 times 10 to the seventh meters above, my meters above the surface of the Earth, and we're trying to find the speed of the projectile over here. So to me, this is a classic law of conservation of energy problem. Why? Well, we have a speed changing, and it's changing because height is changing. Speed's related to kinetic energy. Height's related to potential energy. And we don't have any frictional forces that we have to worry about. We were told to ignore drag force. So with the law of conservation of energy, the whole idea is we have one point, point A, right here. We have another point, point B, over here. And it does not matter what happens in between points A and B. All that matters is the energy at A is equal to the energy at B. And that is where we get this formula from. The potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A plus any work done by a non-conservative force between those two points is equal to the potential at B plus the kinetic at B. And in this situation, as I already said, we're ignoring drag force. There are no other forces that are going to do non-conservative work, so we can cross that out. So now we put in our formulas. Potential energy, gravitational potential energy, but this time we're using the formula for potential energy on a universal scale. So that's negative GMM over R. And by the way, during this problem, I'm going to use big M as my symbol for the mass of the planet and little m as my symbol for the mass of the projectile. And also, we have the radius of the Earth here. So the projectile is initially a distance away from the center of the Earth equal to the radius of the Earth. That's what the R in the denominator of this equation means. How far between the centers of the two objects. In this case, the projectile, the center of the projectile, is the radius of the Earth away from the center of the Earth. Then we have kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, the kinetic energy of the projectile we're talking about. On the other side, we have gravitational potential energy. Notice that my denominator here is the radius of the Earth plus the height. Because once again, we're looking for the distance between the center of the projectile and the center of the Earth. So you have to add the radius of the Earth to the height. Always be careful about that when you read a problem. Uh, and then we have the kinetic energy of the projectile at point B. So now we can start to put some numbers in. And here's what that looks like. G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the Earth. Oh, by the way, we can cancel out the mass of the projectile. That happens a lot in law of conservation of energy problems. They all have that lowercase m in them. So back to my numbers. G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth, which I didn't cancel, is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. The radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. The speed at point A, 9,500 meters per second. G again here, mass of the Earth again here. Here is the radius of the Earth plus the height above the surface of the Earth, 1.65 times 10 to the 7th, and our unknown speed at B over here. All right, and now it's really just plugging things into the calculator. You plug all these numbers into the calculator, you get 6.25 times 10 to the 7th, negative. You plug this into the calculator, 4.5 times 10 to the 7th. Plug all that into your calculator, negative 1.74 times 10 to the 7th. And uh, then we still have the 1 half speed at b squared. Uh, adding these together further, 1.739 times 10 to the 7th, negative. 
Uh, and here I added an extra digit onto my uh, rounding, uh, but it's still the same thing. Uh, negative 1.743 times 10 to the seventh, and again, 1 half VB squared. Continuing with the algebra, adding this to this side, we get a positive number, 39,772. And finally, uh, multiplying this by 2 and then taking the square root, 282 meters per second squared. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to solve these conservation of energy type problems. And uh, good luck with uh, the homework.